guys, it is Joe here from Joe Talks Wrestling and today I am bringing you my WWE 2019 Super Showdown Predictions video. I'm going to be watching this pay-per-view with Zach and thank the Lord it's a Saudi show because it means that we don't have to stay up until 5 in the morning um, watching the show, not getting any sleep that night. It's going to start at 6pm for us, which is fantastic, and end at about half 11, which is even better. We can actually sleep. Uh, we probably won't, but, you know, is what it is, but that's why I'm happy about it. Anyway, no women are going to be on this show. Obviously, Saudi Arabia rules. Um, they don't like the women competing, which is completely ridiculous, but... That's their rules, it's their country, I can't say anything. But yeah, we're going to start things off with the kickoff show, so getting into our first match. The first match on the kickoff show is the Usos versus the Revival. I have not been invested in this feud whatsoever. Uh, the Raw Tag Team Champions Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins aren't even on the show, so, you know, what's going on there? The Usos are being booked not very well at the moment. They're being booked as comedic wrestlers. Um, comedic characters pulling pranks on people which is not what they should be the Usos are a dominant team they should be how they were in about 2017 in the feud with the New Day they're serious, they're not laughing and joking um, and the Revival should be the same way, they're a serious team they shouldn't be having pranks pulled on them uh, it's ridiculous, but I am predicting that the Usos are going to win this one the next match up we got Lars Sullivan big old Lars versus Lucha House Party and uh, yeah Last is winning. I'm not even going to talk about this because why not? We've seen it a million times. So next up, we've got a 50-man battle royal, which is very interesting because as of right now, no prize has been announced for the winner and no participants have actually been, like, put in the battle royal. So this prediction is going to be a bit out of nowhere. Um, and, yeah, considering no one's confirmed, this person might be in it, this person might not. But just because he's been treated badly and there's rumours of him leaving... I'm going to go with EC3 because what has EC3 done on the main roster? I, In an ideal world, EC3 can win this Battle Royal and come back maybe, but it's probably going to be someone like Ricochet, Cesaro, um, someone like that that is doing, sort of floating around in the mid-card, not chasing a championship, someone like that that could just, you know, sort of boost their momentum a little. Next up, we've got Braun Strowman, the Monster Among Men, versus Bobby Lashley, the most confused man on earth. And pff, this match is also another one that's a bit out of the blue. I guess the Prince of Saudi Arabia just wants to see two big monsters go at it. Um, and pff, Braun Strowman's winning. You know, screw it. This, this hasn't been very good so far, has it? So this is where the card is starting to get better. Next up, the Intercontinental Championship match between the Demon Finn Balor and Andrade. Now, I never bet against the Demon. So I'm going with Finn Balor uh, to retain his Intercontinental Championship. However, I do want to see an Andrade Championship win in the near future. Andrade is amazing. He should have won Money in the Bank, not Brock Lesnar. I will say that over and over again um, till, the, till the cows come home. I mean, Andrade should have won. But yeah, unfortunately on this occasion, Demon Finn Balor is retaining. Next up, we have got my personal most excited for match on the card. Everyone talking about Undertaker versus Goldberg, obviously. Not in my case. Um, I'm hoping... Right, I'm, I don't want this to sound bad, okay? But in the most respectful way possible. It's not really a respectful way to put this. I'm going into the Taker Goldberg match with the lowest of expectations. Not because I think they're both, you know, absolutely bollocks, but because I want to be surprised. If I go in there expecting a big showdown, the name of the pay per view, Super Showdown, it's not going to happen. We know that both men aren't going to be able to do a 20 minute battle. Um, so I'm going in there with low expectations. So that is not my most anticipated match. However, on the other hand, Two legends that can still go, that haven't gone against each other one-on-one, -on -one, I don't believe, for about 10 years now. Triple H versus Randy Orton. There hasn't been any really storyline build at all for this, other than a promo last week on Raw. But the promo package they aired the week before on Raw was the only thing I needed to see. This is literally my two childhood wrestlers going at it again. My childhood's come back to life. Um, and obviously, I love Triple H to death. Love Randy Orton. And it's interesting to see. Um, who's going to win? I don't know. I'm betting my money on the game. 
Next up, we got Roman Reigns versus the best in the world, Shane McMahon. Um, I refuse to do it. I can't be bothered. Um, and I don't care about this match. I don't care. Roman Reigns versus Shane McMahon. They've had the spotlight on them for weeks now. Um, and this has literally been like one of the main things on Raw and on SmackDown. Why? Why? It's pointless. I mean, I don't care. Roman Reigns is winning. End this feud. So this is where it starts to get interesting. A match I am also very much looking forward to because the result is up in the air at the moment. Uh, the, these next two matches, the result is up in the air for both of them. Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler for the WWE Championship. And... <sighs> Ziggler has been... He's acting like a babyface in his promos, but he is attacking Kofi, he's attacking Woods, he's acting like a heel physically. And Ziggler's been going on about how it should have been me. It should have been Dolph that won the WWE Championship, not Kofi. Um, Dolph's been there just as long. Dolph deserves it just as much, which he does. He does deserve a, um, a World Championship run with the, the big, the WWE Championship. And is it going to happen at Super Showdown? I don't believe it is. There's two things that can happen. Uh, well, no, three things that can happen. Kofi retains, Ziggler wins, or Lesnar cashes in. Lesnar turned around on Raw talking to Paul Heyman saying he's going to cash in on Friday. He never said, I'm cashing in on Seth on Friday. He just said, I'm cashing in on Friday. So he could completely come out of nowhere and cash in for the WWE Championship instead of the Universal title. Um, I don't believe that's the likely thing that's going to happen. However... I am predicting Kofi Kingston to retain. If there's a Brock cash in, however, Brock Lesnar's winning. And moving swiftly on to the next one, the Universal Championship match. The worst, like, wrestler in the entire of Raw challenging for the Universal Championship, Baron Corbin. The most charismatic man on the entire roster. Sarcasm. Baron Corbin facing Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship. Get rid of it. Take it out back and set it on fire and burn it. Just burn it. It shouldn't be a thing, all right? Baron Corbin, no. Get out of the main event. Get out. Just leave. Leave with your TGI Fridays outfit. Leave. Anyway, rant over. Seth Rollins is winning. There's no way Baron Corbin is winning this match. Brock Lesnar. Mm, Will he cash in? He said he would, but he also said he was going to cash in. On Raw and he didn't. Is he going to turn around now and be like, no, I'm cashing in at Stomping Grounds. What a name. Seth Rollins is winning the Baron Corbin match. However, if there is a Brock Lesnar cash in, in an ideal world, the entire roster will run out and just absolutely batter Brock Lesnar to make sure and like literally kick him out of WWE. In an ideal world, not Vince's world. Lesnar, if he cashes in, he's winning. But Seth Rollins, my prediction to win. Brock Lesnar winning if there's a cash in. Now let's move on to the main event. So the main event of Super Showdown, I've given this quite a bit of thought because I haven't been excited for this match as I should have been, uh, obviously because of how the men work nowadays. Um, and everyone going on, this is, this is, there is no denying, this is a dream match. There is a lot of people out there um, that have like been watching Undertaker and Goldberg since the year I was born, since 2002 in WWE when Goldberg arrived and thinking, why haven't these two faced off one-on-one -on -one yet? And the year and the year is 2019 and it's finally happening tomorrow night. And well, who's gonna win? I never bet against The Undertaker, but also Goldberg absolutely dominates everyone in his path. Realistically, I believe it's gonna go to a no contest. I believe there might be a draw or a screwy finish setting up a potential rematch. But I don't believe that that potential rematch is going to happen until the final few minutes of the match is going to get cleared by Vince. Because if these two go out there and are working a match, the crowd's not in, well, one of the crowd ever into it in Saudi Arabia, but it's obvious that it's not what we want to see. Like when Undertaker and Kane took on DX, um, not many people really wanted to see that mainly because of my HBK coming out of retirement but if you look about halfway in the moment Triple H tore his pectoral muscle and it was on them three to do the match 
it started going downhill. And if that happens in the Taker Goldberg match, there pro- will probably be no, probably maybe even a screwy finish, but no potential rematch. Um, so in that case, if I have to pick a wrestler, I'm going with the Undertaker. But I do believe there's going to be a screw finish of some sort. But yeah, screw finish or not, it should hopefully be a hopefully, hopefully be a good match. But anyways, that was my WWE Super Showdown 2019 Saudi Arabia predictions. I've been Joe from Joe Talks Wrestling. You will see me and Zach tomorrow reacting. Please give this video a like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.